the way the way Diana was the people's princess, this is the people's show. Okay, this is the <laughs> people's show. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Off to Broadway, the podcast where we deep dive into anything and everything musical theater from the comfort of my car. I'm Tara. I'm Stefania. And in today's episode, we're talking about Diana the Musical. We literally just watched this. Like, we are not even an hour after watching this. We were recording this episode. And I feel like before we get into it, because we have, like, so many thoughts this is like kind of the conclusion of our back to back to back episodes on like movie musicals movie musical events so just for anyone that's been listening to us on a consistent weekly basis our next episode we are back to our regular schedule of bi-weekly and we hope that you enjoyed our movie musical (laughs) here we are with diana the main event (laughs) we were blessed in september blessed and now october october it's just week after week after week after week of new releases and I think it's so interesting that like the three back to back to backers here are so vastly different from each other. Yes. Um, yeah, we literally we just watched Diana the musical, as we had said on many episodes previously, the event of the season. And you know what? It was the event of the season. So before we get into our thoughts, this is a very interesting thing, because is this the first time I've ever done this where it hasn't per- like premiered on Broadway. It hasn't opened on Broadway yet. However, we have filmed and released a version of it. This is a show you cannot see anywhere in the world. And no, very few right. people have seen it. And yet very few people have seen it before today, before it released on Netflix, like on live on stage. And yet we are watching a filmed stage version on Netflix. It's a very this pipeline is very interesting. And I think when it was announced, the first thought was why is this happening like are they trying to are they trying to boost ticket sales will this boost their ticket sales i think they filmed this in may i want to say there was a lot of like tweets about it they here's the thing we talked about this last year i feel a year ago almost i feel like they might have filmed this a year ago really I remember because like i don't follow zach adkins on twitter but i remember liking a tweet of his that was like we're going into the theater. We're filming for like a couple days. This is coming out at some point, but there was no actual release date. We knew that this no. was coming for a year, but we yes, did not know when it. it when it was coming. It was like fall. And then all of a sudden, as like everything always happens, it's like October 1st, we're getting Diana the Musical. And we got it. And we're here. And it is not premiering on Broadway for another month. So, yeah. I believe the first performance is November 2nd. Yeah. As per so, their Instagram account. Basically, like, a f- a full month uh, it's you get to digest this musical and then the f- the lucky people that will be in the long acre a month from today will get to see it so uh, we've now watched the netflix version of this and the question would be do you think this is going to entice or deter people from buying tickets to see it in the theater now i know what we think but what <laughs> i was think- gonna say <laughs> What do you think other people are going to think? Um, like, what I do you think, think? I don't think people will buy tickets to this show after seeing this musical on Netflix. No, absolutely However, not. However, absolutely not. That's we're ready to be us. front row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to see this in person live immediately. The way we feel about this show is the way that we feel about The Bodyguard, the musical. Yeah. I'm trying to think like what other... D- don't get me wrong. This is bad. This show Horrible. is not great, but it is so bad that it's so good. It comes all the way back around, like a 360, all the way back around to being And good. I feel like many people don't understand this um, thinking, but this is something that we reference like very often in our yes. daily lives of, I think we literally had this conversation in our group chat with Alessandra and Shara about how, yeah. um, what was that movie? He's All That? Yeah. Yes, he's all that. That, yeah. that Alessandra thought that he's all that was good. I hated yeah. it. And then yeah, she I said it was not that it, bad. Yeah, and I compared it to another movie musical we got in September, Cinderella. And I was like, I recognize that Cinderella was terrible, but I still had a good time. And that's how I feel about this. <laughs> there, the thing with he's all that, not to like delve too deep into the Addison Ray vehicle, but <laughs> congrats, Addison, on your Netflix deal. <laughs> It 
wasn't bad enough to be fun. You yes. know what I mean? Like, if it was worse, it would have been better. But it was kind of in that middle gray zone of being not good enough to be good, but not bad enough to be a wild, fun time. So it just kind of, like, sat in the middle. Whereas this was, like, insane. Wild. Diana the Musical was insane. I... And I would pay money to see it in, in person. There was moments of this show specifically we'll talk about it again and again (laughs) but specifically the wedding scene that we were crying laughing and I said could you imagine us sitting in the theater we would be I would be crying like on On the the floor floor. crying we rewound her stepping into that wedding dress like (laughs) 10 times we were like how is this happening like we were watching a magic show trying to like parse out the trick we're like how did she get in there was there a person in there yeah what's going on it was yeah. crazy okay so before we like deep dive into this um heads up this is a spoiler heavy episode yeah. so if you have not seen diana the musical on netflix like maybe go watch it and then come listen to us so i guess we should start this episode off the same way we've done our other movie musical episodes and that is our overall thoughts on this so steph what are your overall thoughts of diana the musical um for the most part the music is fairly uh mediocre to forgettable Uh um lyrics horrible um set design good Mm -hmm. um i thought um just 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 a wild fun good time like 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 as we've said bad but but that didn't bother me you no. know like yeah. didn't impact my enjoyment at all yeah i agree um i had said to you while watching this if it wasn't this i would be disappointed I expected it, this is so bad to say, but like I expected it to be bad. Like we expected this musical to be, I feel like we referenced this in our way too early Tony episode, which was way, way too early when we recorded that in 20, at the beginning of 2020, when we were discussing um, awards for the actors and we were like kind of chatting about Diana. And I feel like our thoughts were like very similar then of, First of all, why is this made? Like, why are we doing this? And second of all, like, what could this be? If it's not a parody, it would be wrong if it was serious. And I feel like they rode the line between the two and it worked for me. But again, like, it's bad. But I would recommend it to everybody and I would watch it again right now. (laughs) I'm wondering how much of this was intentional because you said they rode the line between, like, parody and And seriousness. And I think that was luck. I straight up think they like <laughs> lucked into. Oh yeah, I don't think I think many of the things that happened in this were not intentional, and it just happened no, that way. No, no. Yeah. Um, can I can I draw attention to the shirt I'm wearing? Yes, um, of course. Well, like while we're talking about it, um, I'm wearing my Memphis shirt because I saw Memphis <laughs> on Broadway like ten years ago, basically. And again, as we all know, it was an extremely um, nuanced and subtle take on race. That show, it was absolutely yeah. not. It was it was not. Um, <laughs> and I feel like. This musical was heavy handed in the same way as Memphis was, you know, every every like point about Diana was like hammered home, you know, she's a pretty, pretty girl um, <laughs> in, a pretty dress. Like, <laughs> in a pretty, pretty dress. Like it's it was just everything was like they knocked the audience over the head with every point they were making. You know, they couldn't, nothing was subtle in this musical at all. And we should mention that Memphis, like the creative team is like, they did Diana. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, like their style, like I saw, I understood how they got there from like how they got here from there. You know, so it's um, David Bryan, who is the piano player, keyboardist from Bon Jovi, and Joe DiPietro. They wrote Memphis. And then they also, um, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, wrote this. (laughs) Um, And yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting to talk about the target audience. Again, I think this is something we've talked about over the last few episodes now of I've literally been confused of who the target audience was on every single thing that we've watched. I think you are the target audience for this musical. Please show us your prop. (laughs) This is my Harry and Meghan mug. So like I'm like merged out today. I am the target audience for this. Um, No one else is the target audience for this. Me. Well, it is interesting that this is coming out 
now because Diana is like having a moment in the media, in like a whole resurgence. You know, we've got Spencer that's coming out um, with, with Kristen, Kristen Stewart. Stewart. Um, the Crown season five is coming in 2022. It, the Crown just won like a whole bunch of Emmys in September. So I just feel like the Royals are, I mean, the Royals are always like a hot topic to top to talk about. But in the last year it's been like pretty high priority on a lot of media outlets lists um for sure i i think it's very interesting that netflix would one has a a production deal with harry and megan yeah um and then is also releasing the crown which is like a very serious very um like purports itself to be you know prestige drama um, about the royal family in season four, which is the most recent season to come out, like focuses heavily on the Charles and Diana relationship. And the opposite side of the spectrum is releasing this musical, which I feel like is created with a lot less um, respect, if yes. you'll say. The I- crown, I always felt was created, like even though it does show like harsh things, um, I think it, it kind of does paint the royal family in like a positive light to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it It is created with an amount of respect, I believe, that this is not created with, in my view. Well, my first question, like, five minutes in was, did they consult anybody on this storyline? Unknown. They consulted Andrew Morton, for (laughs) sure. A character. The Andrew Morton number. So I, uh, like, I need to reveal a story. I feel, I don't even know if I said on this episode. I know I definitely told you because, like, you were the only person to care about yeah, this. Absolutely but did. Um, I work um, as a TV producer in Canada, and there was an interview with Andrew Morton because he had a new book coming out, which was um, Elizabeth and Margaret. So talking about, like, their storyline. And I don't know how the conversation, oh, I know how the conversation turned to Diana. As this interview was going on, he, like, pulls out his mug to sip water and it's a Diana the musical mug as soon as I saw that I texted Steph and I was like oh my god like royal biographer Andrew Morton is drinking out of a Diana the musical mug like where did he get this you're thinking at this point he's just seen the musical oh yeah 100% I knew nothing obviously we had no information on this show so then he goes into um, because the uh, TV host was like oh like love your mug what is that from and he was like I saw this fantastic musical at La Jolla me again messaging Steph being like I heard this was trash at La Jolla. Like, La Jolla got (laughs) such bad reviews of Diana. Like, terrible reviews. And he was like, it's a fantastic show. It, like, paints her life in, like, such a great way. Little did we know, Andrew Morton is a character in this musical. He has a full-on solo. And honestly, that song slaps. (laughs) Yes. Yes. What's it called? It's called um, The Words Came Pouring Out, the catchiest song in the whole show. And the words came pouring out. That's all I know. That's all we know. Yeah. That's, it was great. Diana's on the phone at her desk, and then yeah. she's telling Andrew Morton all these stories. Fantastic. But it was interesting to, like, see that, because hearing him speak about it and then, like, reading a bit of his um, book, he touches on a lot that him and Diana had, like, many phone calls together where she, like, exposed everything about the royal family and, like, how she was feeling and all of that. But, like, to see the cast holding the Diana biography in this musical and singing to it... Like, straight up his book. Straight up his book. Wild. Not even props, just the book. No. What a time. I mean, I think we have to talk about, in my opinion, the star of this musical, Diana herself, Jenna DeWall, giving, like, an amazing vocal performance. I was shocked. Sure. Yes. She sounded beautiful the whole time. Every person in the show giving an amazing vocal performance, but her at the center of it, really, really a star, I think. So... The score is quite rocky, which I feel you would not think of when you think of a Diana musical. First of all, you'd be like, why are you musicalizing this story? That doesn't make any sense. That's the first question. And then put it to a rock score sounds crazy. And I think it works sometimes. And I also think that Diana's in her head score is rock. She references Freddie Mercury. She references... Queen as a whole, she references like many different 80s bands, which I feel like is why we get this rocky tone. But then we hear like the Queen sing and we'll hear Charles sing and it's kind of more like traditional musical theater. The tone 
kind of strange when you cut between the two, especially when there's like a back to back song. I think I think the contrast in musical styles. That's one thing I think is intentional to show that Diana is much more forward thinking than the royal family. So when the royal family is singing, you get these like cla- more classical musical theater songs. At one point, I was like, this sounds very like Phantom, Phantom. almost. And then um, we transition to Diana and her music. When she's singing, it's upbeat. It has electric guitar. It's going forward and it's showing you they're, they're, they think differently. These characters, their internal monologue, the way that they view life is different. And so yeah. that I thought was a good use of musical styles. I mean, should we like go through the list of all of the shows that I, you and I thought that this show was? Right, right. So I the don't first... think there's an original no thought in this musical at all no no every every song we're like this reminds me of this this reminds me of this this reminds me of this yeah every single moment yeah every single moment and i know everything references everything you know you get inspired but it felt very like blatant it was heavy-handed points yeah so you this was a you call it what was the first musical that you said this made you think as soon as this started and the first song which i actually think is a really good song underestimated um Mm -hmm. that diana walks out and sings at the very beginning i was like we are watching pretty woman the musical and that pretty that stayed true the whole way through we got like i can't go back vibes we got like all of that right back right down to the end where she's singing if in that like white suit a la samantha barks in the white jumpsuit was waiting for her to just come out and be like this is who i am she should have done it like we should have got that fantastic um other song other musicals that we thought um this was like ghost Yes. Um, that was very like the 80s, the business people, ghost. The um, lighting the body- was very much like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the Bodyguard. The uh, Whitney Houston jukebox musical based on the classic film, my favorite film, The Bodyguard. Um, <laughs> the Cher Show. Oh, yeah. We got like the quick, the Diana quick changes was very Cher Show. All, I wish that we were taking a tally during uh, our watch of how many times she changed her outfit. Um amazing how many outfits that she wears so So many great quick changes like sorry to reference the wedding dress again but like we really need to deep dive into this wedding dress moment because i feel like it needs to be seen everyone needs to know about it i wish an episode of serial (laughs) this is an episode of serial on how the wedding dress quick change happened okay so the wedding dress comes out if you haven't watched it watch it but we're gonna deep dive into every frame also a side note this scene fantastic great great song fantastic i will okay the wedding dress comes out right and you're thinking oh my god she's there it's it's happening it's the gown um and then princess diana comes walks out from the side of the stage you're like oh she's not in there i'm thinking it's someone else in there it's a classic stage trick and then she's singing around to all these different people and then the first time we watched it, I was just like, wait, how is she in the wedding dress? So we rewound, rewound. Okay. <laughs> well, we thought we, it was like a cut because they're filming it, right? So it's right. very easy. Yeah. No, no. not a cut. <laughs> well, there might have been a cut in there, but no. She walks behind Charles, gets, I think, I guess, like into the dress or just like shoves her head in as Charles is like standing in front of her lifting the veil off to reveal her face. I swear there was a person in there because I swear I saw someone singing and then as she walked around I think they crouched down on the floor. It's possible. It's possible. Um, It's like the reverse if anyone has seen um, Erica Henningsen get ripped out of the wedding dress in Mean (laughs) Girls. Think of it backwards because that's what it was. Yeah she just like She's like walked around and then she's just like her head is in there. I don't know if her arms went through because the like man no, couldn't or whatever tell. was holding the bouquet the whole time. So yeah. I don't think so. I think she just shoved her head in. Maybe like, the like when you're at a woman. pumpkin patch. <laughs> when like when you're at a pumpkin patch and you just like stick your head in to take a picture, that's what it was. That's what it was. It was crazy. <laughs> we watched it ten times. I, I wonder if the other woman who I assume crouched down was the one who was holding the bouquet. I, I think it was like a mannequin arms. Like Honestly, it was a big puppy sleeves. The the bouquet was like covering it. It's I don't think we there should, was anything like there. Diana the musical tweeted at us today. We should have asked them this. Yeah, like how, how does that this? quick change work? We want a like back shot of it. This yeah. is one of those things where remember the Tony Awards a few years ago where Kelly O'Hara we saw her quick change backstage um, yes. between the dresses. I need that for this. Yeah, we need the back angle for sure. This is also, I was saying um, while we were watching this, unlike 
other pro shots, because I will consider this a pro shot, because I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was no audience. So they were able to, in my opinion, get many cameras in there because it was like a multi camera angle shot. You know, they got the big jib camera, they had like many side angles, which I think helps. With a lot of those Diana quick changes, I mean, the Act 1 finale quick change, also amazing. From the red dress to the white outfit, every, all of the people are like crossing by super fast and then just reveal. She's in like four it. different outfits in that uh, in that number. It was amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, Diana, obviously a fashion icon. Uh, a few years ago when I was in London, I went to Kensington Palace and went to the exhibit um, where she... Um, where William and Harry had a lot of her clothes displayed. At the time, they didn't have her wedding dress, but I believe her wedding dress is out now if you're in the area and you want to check yeah. it out. Um, it's, like, beautiful, beautiful stuff. But she was, like, a fashion icon. So the clothes were so important to the show. Mm-hmm. And I and they, like, recreated so many of these outfits. Um, the one that was, like, most obvious to me besides her wedding dress was the dress that she wore when she brought William out of the hospital for the first time. I was like, that's exactly the dress she wore. Yeah. Um, We were missing what has become a 2020, 2021 trend, the biker shorts. We are both wearing biker shorts right now. The the giant sweatshirt with the bike shorts. (laughs) We were missing that. Am I Princess Diana? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, speaking about William, I feel like the timeline of this musical is all over the map. Interesting. We Mm -hmm. get um, Diana being pregnant when she sings for no reason, Charles, I'm having your baby. And then Will mm-hmm. she does a, a little spin and then William is born. And then she's like in the hospital and then we see her go up to the bassinet, which I assumed was William again. Oh no, it's Harry. Harry. With the line. She sings, Seth. Harry, my ginger-haired son. What? <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> Who wrote this? Who wrote it? Um, yeah, the lyrics in this show are atrocious so bad i have no so other bad. that's like the worst word to use no, but like that's the horrible. only word to use it, they're they're horrible like, really bad <laughs> yeah really bad just um, just very basic and yeah. cringy yes um, um yeah but yeah so we get that like baby scene and then we sort of like very briefly touch on diana's um depression Mm -hmm. But again, I thought that, like, Harry had just been born. But, like, no, it seemed like we skipped five years and she was wearing the same outfit. So that was surprising to me. For a show that she's changed, like, literally 30 times, why did they keep her in the same dress? It's true. Because it was, like, that was the most confusing passage of time moment, you know? Because we, so the musical starts in 1980. And then I think William's born in 82. And Harry's born in 84. So, like, very quickly um, they're born. And then, yeah, you're not... The time is passing, but you're not, it's not being conveyed as well on stage until Charles is like, the boys are at home asking about you. And I'm like, Harry was just born. He's not like asking a anything. a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> he can't speak. Yeah. But I guess he could. And I guess, I don't know if we said at the top of this episode, but it kind of ends like, well, it ends when she dies, which we were shocked. Right. <laughs> it like goes to their, when they get divorced and yeah. then during the kind of epilogue song, If, um, they Great song. kind of... It, it, beautiful. That was the first song I ever heard from it. I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Not bad They at released all. that a long time ago. Yes. Yes, I agree. Um, yes. And then they kind of convey the um, her death. Can I tell a, like a side tangent story about where I was when Princess Diana died? Yes. Is it another okay, Wonderland so- story? Was there another blackout? Even better, even better. So, I mean, I, 1997, I was, like, not quite four years old. I was almost four when she died. And um, so I don't really remember this, but I've heard the story many times from my parents. My family is obviously in the happiest place on Earth, Disney World. Oh, my God. Another um, theme park, Steph. Like, what obviously, is Always in a theme park for world global moments. <laughs> At Walt Disney World, we are just, like, in the hotel room, just, like, chilling, doing whatever. My, my parents turn on the TV. One of my parents, I don't remember which one, says... Did Princess Diana die? My other parents are like, no. They're like, I think she did. The funeral is on. They had no idea until the funeral was on, and then they just happened upon it while in Disney World. I mean, fully like, missed the entire thing. No Twitter. We were distracted. 
Yeah, yeah it was very you different. Know? Unless you were watching the news every day, but like you're at for Disney. sure. We're at Disney World. We were busy. Like I was almost four. My brother wasn't even one. Like we were little. Yeah. We we're just like parks all day, all day until yeah. they just randomly turned on the news. And it was straight up her funeral. Wow. I don't have a fun story. I don't remember no. where I was. Probably at home. <laughs> at three, I don't remember old, either, like, but I've heard the story. <laughs> um, wow. I, I need to know the rest of your like theme park adventures. Where <laughs> I mean, big news. honestly, we've hit the major two. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just like, so that was like kind of interesting. I also think that as we were watching it and we fully thought that it would just end with the divorce because to me... And I mean, it, it did still seem this way. It, it's pretty jarring to go from the tone of the musical to a more serious Diana has now died. Um, I do think that they did like kind of a good job with that. It was still very weird, but lots of flash bulbs. Yeah, so like they did kind of foreshadow it in that song with the queen where the queen is singing and Diana um, rejects the offer to have personal Security. protection officers mm-hmm. um, continue with her. And a lot of like, you know, they, you know, there's discussion that that's a huge reason why like Harry is so adamant that him and Meghan still have their personal protection because he saw what happened to his mother when she rejected it and didn't have it anymore. Um, So there was like that little bit of foreshadowing. And if you know, like, you know, and then, yeah, a lot of lights and then like, you know, some sirens are playing and then like newscasters coming on. But then truly... You know, it was pretty, like, tame, pretty subtle, if you can call it that, until (laughs) she turned around and walked into, like, the gates of heaven. And at that point, I was like, oh, no. I remember what it reminded me of. If anyone has seen the 25th anniversary of Les Mis, which is concert edition, so there's really no other way to do, you know, like, the Eponine Fontaine death scenes other than the characters literally walk off stage into the gates of heaven. But in a musical where they've got, like, so much other things going on, they could have definitely done it differently. I think a subtle blackout would have worked great. And then it ends with, like... Everyone watches her, which again, very Les Mis, I feel. And actually, maybe even like the real stage show of Les Mis when Valjean dies. Uh, spoiler for yeah. Les Mis if anyone has not seen that. <laughs> Valjean but dies like, in the end. But he kind sort of walks into him. the light. But to me, that makes more sense because he sings about that a lot too of like, yeah. it's more spiritual than I would sure. say this is. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so when the ensemble is like watching her and then they turn around and then we get like everybody walking towards the camera and then lights out. It's like, I yeah, don't know that we needed this. Um, that was a little bit weird. I mean, speaking of weird, maybe the most weird out there moment, Mr. James Hewitt arriving. <laughs> On like the mechanical bull horse thing? The saddle? Like Crazy. I was on the Diana Netflix hashtag on Instagram, just like, you know, checking up, seeing what was happening because Diana actually had a watch party. Um, Again, we're recording this the night that it came out. So Friday, they had a watch party on Twitter and we're tweeting along. And someone had videoed their screen of that moment. And I was like, I just followed myself for maybe the most bizarre moment of the entire show. I don't even know who James Hewitt is. I feel like I was not like, I didn't uh, keep up with that much of Diana's life and this man. Um, even me as like a kind of royal follower was yeah. not super super familiar. Um, he was a former British cavalry officer, and he, um, as I said in the musical, like was the the kids like riding horse riding instructor. Yeah. Um, Charles was not happy that they were together. No, even though I mean it's very hypocritical. Um, of course. Very hypocritical that Charles was with. Camilla, not the entire time, but like basically the entire time of their marriage, even if he wasn't physically with her, he was emotionally uh, cheating. He was having an emotional affair. Yeah. And so for him to be like, you can't see him, it's just like, well, fix yourself first and then come back to me. (laughs) I mean, James Hewitt gets a full solo and I don't think we need it. Yeah. Yeah, there's that moment, the parallel moment, right, where James Hewitt is in one bed and Camilla's in the other bed, you know, and they've just been left by Charles and Diana to go see to their duties. And you have the that, lyrics like, in that parallel. song. I don't even know what the song was, but um, it was to have been called "Here Comes James Hewitt," him and her, and him and her, probably him and her, and him and her. I think it was him and her, and him and her. Yeah. It was like 
so literal that both of the couples were having sex and that's, I was that's like, what the whole know. musical was it was very literal every line like a metaphor has not been heard by these people they don't no. understand metaphors just very very explicitly literal yeah um, something that i thought was interesting and again makes me question who was consulted if anyone was consulted charles is painted in a really bad light in this musical like he's trash and like does he deserve this? Maybe. But there was many moments that I was like, oh, we are just roasting Charles, like, for two right. hours straight. I mean, this is a musical. Like, it's called Diana. It is about her. She is the hero of the story. And so, you know, who is your most obvious villain? Um, it's Charles. And I think there are probably um, other actual more obvious villains, if you, like, zoom out. Yes. Um, but... But this was a very zoomed in story. Like you don't meet any of Charles's siblings or anyone else really in the family. Like Diana has her sister there for a little bit, but for the most part, it's just Diana, Charles, and a bit of the Queen. But yeah, I think if you zoom out, I mean, maybe this isn't an unpopular take, but I think like Charles is like a little bit of a victim in this whole situation <laughs> too. I mean, I mean, people maybe wouldn't go a that far. Bit. <laughs> But like it's it's like it was a very complicated situation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um so yeah, it was very, very focused on Diana's experience. Um, yeah, I do But think- at the same time, sorry, I like I do feel that they didn't really um delve into how innocent and unprepared she was at the beginning. Like oh, for I feel sure. like they did like I feel like we needed more of that to understand how like blindsided she was by how the marriage actually went. Yeah, I had said like you know, we start off and she, like, sings this number and then we, like, go to a party and then she's already getting engaged to Charles. It was like, whoa, we really just, like, zoomed through this entire chunk of time. Even though you said it was, like, only six days. Yeah, they've only... No, they've only still. met, like, six times before they oh, were engaged. Yeah. So, but but still, like, we didn't... Um, it, was, it was weird to me that we didn't get any sort of, like, connection between the two before the engagement... Yeah, I almost wanted, like, a meet-cute or something. Like, yeah. I don't know if it was quite that or much. Like, it was probably more arranged. But but you want to see why she liked him so yes. that you understand why she's, like, willing to put up with so much for so long. You know what I needed? I needed, like, um, a lights-out moment with two spotlights and the two of them just, like, eyes meet. And then we can continue mm. on. That's all I needed. I just needed a really brief moment like that. Um, sure. Because then we get... <laughs> another bizarre song which was like the very like 80s rock is it the one is it called the the worst job in england is that the one i'm referencing or is it the one the right at the that? beginning right at the beginning no the i think it's this is how your people dance that's right. the yes. one with where they go the to like change. the opera cello Bob. moment yes 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 i was so confused by the... T- I actually, like, loved this scene because it was so wild to me. And this is when I was like, this is ghost. The lighting in this is ghost. Like, this yeah. is everything that I picture ghost to be, even though, like, we've only seen the regional production. Um, but they, he took her to, like, classical something. And Camilla was obviously there. And she had this moment with Camilla, like, why are you here type thing. And then they sit and watch. And this is where... I believe she says the line, Charles only listens to dead white men music. I think, yes. I believe I think she says happened. that line. And that's when I was saying she references like Freddie Mercury and Queen. And then mm-hmm. we get that sort of like 80s. And then we get a very random quick change for no uh, yeah, reason. I don't know why they quick changed her in that moment. I feel like she could have worn the green dress the whole time. Maybe yeah. I'm missing like a reference to an actual outfit she wore. But um, I did not feel it was necessary to do that. Right. So the scene starts like very classical. And then when she starts singing, we get like, you know, lights and like hairography and like all of that good stuff. The cello that this man is playing turns into like a neon cello. I love that. I thought it was so cool. But then she also like dives into the audience like a mosh pit. I, like, so much is happening. There, I don't think I've ever said what so many times while watching a musical or like, what's happening why are we doing this but you would think that that's meant with like negative energy and it's the complete opposite i had was like so excited to be saying like what the hell is going on here joy it was pure joy for most of this honestly just i mean enjoyment should we talk about like our main event the main event the main event that was (laughs) 
the thriller in Manila with Diana and Camilla. Who wrote this? <laughs> Who wrote this? This was very Rocky the musical to me. I mean, it's I was getting titled. kinky boots. I was getting yeah. kinky boots in that and moment. And also, like, the song sounded very Elton John. Um, it was Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. It was that exact song. It was. <laughs> it, it was that song. I, it was a. It was. It was plagiarized. I swear. It, I'm sure. It's crazy. I mean, I'm it not was crazy sure, to me. but like, I feel like it is. No, but it was absolutely that song. It this was. was like. Wow, I'm just like thinking of this reference now. This is like the confrontation in Les Mis of like yeah. Diana versus Camilla, like Javert versus Valjean. Yeah. Um, they're just kind of like going at it with each other. Um, Diana and Charles still married, but obviously he is seeing Camilla like having, as you said, the emotional relationship with Camilla. He's he's socializing with Camilla. Like he's going to parties. They're going to parties together as a couple. Him and, and Camilla. also crazy. Um, Yes. And then also when um, Diana is there and they're like leaving together and as they're leaving, he says to Camilla, I'll call you later. Like Charles. And she's like, no, he won't. I like, love that. Amazing. And he's like, that was also giving me a little bit of American Psycho, the dinner party scene. Because, um, like, you know, the 80s, the, um, I don't know, the high society people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. That song was absolutely fantastic. If you watch one thing from this watch that. musical, I think it would be that. I think it I would mean, be that. There are many great things, but I think it would be that. I mean, the wedding dress insert and then that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like 10 seconds. Just like dissect frame by frame how she yeah. gets into that wedding dress. Exactly. And then, um, and then watch the main it event. in slow-mo. Ne- we'll okay, do it next time. This. Yeah, um. yeah. Because this, we will be rewatching this. I will oh, rewatch this many I, times. Like, this is the thing. You said I would recommend this over Dear Evan Hansen, and I agree. And also, I would just, like, put this on in the background because it's fun. And I also said, like, should we make, like, a yearly event and just watch it <laughs> just every, like every year? year? watch Diana. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, I I would, like, happily pay to see this in, in a theater. Oh. And next possible opportunity to see Diana the Musical, like, will be... We'll be doing this. I mean, I don't think that this show is going to have longevity on Broadway. Oh, no, 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 no. But so I do we got to wait for like a non-equity tour or something. I think it's a perfect tour show. I actually think it's a perfect tour show. It's got that I mean, name recognition for the for the seniors. Another show that we um, have referenced many times on this podcast but have not yet. This reminded us a bit of Donna Summer, a su- like sure. Summer the Musical. Like it yes. felt, we got the same vibes. Like it's... I had said during while watching this, like, should this have been a jukebox musical? Maybe. I don't know who would have done the music, but maybe. Just all 80s stuff. Just all 80s music. Yeah, um, it would have been interesting. Um, I do want to talk a bit about Camilla because I think Aaron Davey gives, like, a good performance. But I also don't think that we have enough of Camilla in this storyline. I don't think we, even Diana, I don't think we have enough of anyone. We don't have enough of anyone's actual storyline. We just have like a story. No, we didn't delve deep into anyone's like actual inner life. Mm -mm. Um, So every actor in this is working with basically nothing. Um, I know, I would love doing the most. D- doing the most. Like, even the ensemble, which I, I, we had read like, one review before jumping on here um uh people were saying that the ensemble is not seen enough because of the way that it's filmed i i kind of like the way that it was filmed but i do think it would be interesting to see it in a theater and get the full stage picture um to talk about the full stage picture david zinn did the sets for this as we said really good those buckingham palace gates really good the moment I loved is I think it's the wedding where there's yes. the neon yellow like arches. arches that come behind her. I thought that was like really beautiful. Yeah, he did uh, SpongeBob sets. He did Fun Home. He's done tons of plays. So I think it was an interesting choice um, to have him do this. Um, you know, like shout out to costumes, like the wig department. Diana's got like both good wigs. <laughs> Yes, like her younger wig. And then in act two, she shows up with her kind of like shorter, maybe more swept back wig. She's shy in act one, so the wig is covering her face. And in act two, she shows her face because she is mature. She knows what she wants, you know? Yeah. Um, But yeah, other than that, like we kind of walked into this pretty blind. The cast recording came out a week prior to um, this Netflix 
uh, movie. We chose not to listen to it on purpose. And I think that that was the correct choice because hearing these songs out of context and then seeing them in context, we'd be like, I don't even understand. But now I think I would listen to some of them like out of the show um this is a cast recording i think next time we're driving in a car yes. next road trip. this is the new road trip cast recording um we need to learn every word um we <laughs> yes i i agree i think there are like some bangers in there like the the 80s stuff really good stuff and i mean as you said like we had heard um if I, was the if, one i heard if her. was the one i had heard uh, I will, but I don't know where. Maybe I heard it in the trailer. I because I don't think it was released um, anywhere. That sounds. But I'm trying to think right. like you know the ones that I'll listen to again for sure. Honestly, like the worst job in England with by Prince Charles. Great, that was a great song. Good. This is how your people dance. Love snap click a time. I yeah. will amazing. Um, the world fell in love was sweet. Oh, I think happiness slash simply breathe was the one when I was like, Jenna DeWall. Like, she was belting. It was amazing. She's got I, I such a good voice. There was like a tone that came out in her voice. I believe it was like that one. Like a raspy, yes. yelly. I was like, oh, that's, that's an interesting, like, new, like, we've heard her voice one way. And now yep. in this, you know, moment of pain for her. It's like she's accessed this other part of her voice. Fantastic. Also, something we have not even touched on, this musical is like 95% sung through, which I did yeah. not expect. Oh, I I know. I really thought it was going to be a book musical, but it was it was a lot of singing, which but I, I think helped it, helped it. I agree. I think having it basically sung through is a saving grace in this bad musical. <laughs> I just, I'm just imagining if we had to have these like really clunky scenes between no. songs, how painful it would have been. No. And I think this was a much better way to, um, to represent the story 100%. Yeah. I'm trying to think like, way, like thinking back to our uh, way too early Tony nominations, I think we for sure had Jenna DeWall for Best Actress. Mm-hmm. I think we had like Aaron Davey in there. And then do we have Judy... K. Judy K. I think maybe you had Aaron Davies and I had Judy K. Um, I don't think that Judy K. For... has enough to do in this show, to be honest. No, it's very interesting. There's not a lot of Queen. Um, I do think that like scene at the end, the like last song, the basically, officer's wife, I believe. Yes, where she's talking about her marriage to Philip. Um, that was also giving me Billy Elliot vibes. If you can think of like Grandma's song where she's talking about her marriage, this. This was like, you know, we've seen the queen kind of as a a villain throughout this show. And the queen's basically saying, for my duty to my country, I had to do the same thing as you. Um, And it was like a humanizing moment, but maybe like too little too late. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I she's also playing that other character. What's her name? Um, Something Cartland. Yes. Um, Yeah, she's also playing this other character. So. It's interesting for her to be double cast in this way. That's but kind who, of an unusual. Is that character f- like fiction? Is that a real I believe person? She was real. I believe she was real. I believe she was a um, romance writer. Oh, okay, um, yes. Because they reference her um, during the Diana John Hewitt relationship as well. Yeah, which makes sense. But but I think I mean I don't know, but I think they might have. Um, maybe exaggerated or emphasized her relationship with Diana I mean, for everything the musical. I mean, everything in this show was... For, because she becomes, like, a bit of a narrator of sorts in certain yeah, yeah. parts. Um, yeah, I could have done without her, to be honest. She wasn't yeah. really giving me anything. Um, yeah, I, I just think it will be so interesting. Obviously, this, this is actually the... F- I mean, other than Six, because we've seen Six. But this is, like, the first thing we've seen of the new season. Of the new season, yeah. Which is... It's kind exciting. of exciting. Um exciting. and and seeing it, I think um wow, I don't think this will be nominated. Actually, maybe it will be nominated for best musical. I I'm not seeing I'm not seeing good things for it. You know, I can I'm see costumes 100%, set 100%. Costumes are really beautiful. Um, score? Especially they they do love they do love when costumes like replicate, replicate. real things and Which I think is... this does like a good job at this. Like that wedding dress, like 
it's yeah. an iconic piece of clothing and then they recreate it so well here. And again, to compare this to Cher's show, you know, like Bob Mackie had those exact costumes that Cher wore in yes. that show. So I do think the other costume you were saying while we were watching, was that like a uh, sheep sweater with the black Yes, like sheep. the black sheep sweater that like we know Princess Diana wore. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, a, like everything in there, I think, is reference of something she literally wore. Yeah, and I I wonder with performances, I think we are heading into a very interesting uh, 2021, 2022 Tony season. I know we literally yeah. just had the Tony Awards, but like we can <laughs> do it w- over. We can do it way too early this year because it's actually going to happen. Yes. But there's like so many things coming, which is so, yeah. so exciting. But I do think because there's so much... And not saying that this show would have been like an award season darling, but I do think it will get pushed out of almost all of the acting categories except for maybe Jenna DeWall. Yeah, I can see them recognizing Jenna DeWall, especially because there's always less um, people eligible in lead performance than in supporting performances. Um, But yeah, I... But we also got like Sutton, Beanie, Katrina Lang. Like we got a stack. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's it's pretty stacked. Um, I'll be really interested to see what... Um, what ends up happening here. But yeah, I'm not really thinking this is going to, this was not critically acclaimed. Like the few reviews we've kind of glam, like glimpsed over and it'll be reviewed again um, when it opens on Broadway. But um, yeah, I'm not, it's not really a critical darling at all. No, and I think that um, possibly Netflix is the best way to show this show, like this musical. Um, again, would live sitting in my seat in the oh, theater. The way the way Diana was the people's princess, this is the people's show. Okay, this is the people's <laughs> show. Broadway.com audience choice. Here we go. <laughs> Quotes. Quote me on that. I don't know. A couple other musicals I wanted to say that I was like reminded of during this because, again, not an original thought was had when making <laughs> no. this. Um, Rent, obviously. You know, we have the parallel between the aid support group in Rent to Diana visiting the AIDS patient. So that was very Rent. And then this is, go with me, the way Bombshell opens and closes with Marilyn singing kind of like an introspective song directly to the audience. This opened and closed in the exact same way. That last song was Don't Forget Me. I felt... (laughs) I mean, Smash also, you know, like out of this world sometimes crazy. Don't forget so, me is the highlight of Smash. And so when she's in that like white look, she's singing, I don't remember what the song is called. It's called um, If, it's called If, Light the World. And then all the people are surrounding her the way they surround her in Don't Forget Me on Smash. I'm like, it worked. Derek, Derek knew, okay? <laughs> and actually, it was Tom at that point. Tom knew. It was, just, it was like a piece of Pretty Woman and a piece of yeah. Smash come together. And here we come have together. Diana. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I do want to reference, uh, we have referenced this on previous episodes, but like you guys know our favorite Ryan Bloomquist on Twitter has posted, wow, he should repost this video now because it's like saved in my archives. But there was like a regional production of not this Diana musical, but a Diana musical. Yeah. And there are moments of that musical, like the madness of that, that reached the madness of this. I was missing the mm-hmm. newspaper number. I was missing the car crash scene. <laughs> like I, I'm very grateful we didn't have a car crash scene. I think that would have tipped it over into being parody. Too much. Well, yeah. I think it's actually important to talk it about something. It wouldn't, that would not have been tasteful at all. And not that this was tasteful, <laughs> but that would have been extremely distasteful. Exactly. But I do think it's important to talk about what you were saying of the tone of the entire musical in general is interesting when you think about the actual real storyline that is quite tragic at the end of the day. We're realistically not very far removed from Diana's life. Like, we... like. Every day in the news, we see her children. Right. You know, we, who are still like young men, like neither of them are 40 yet. Like, it, it's crazy to think about, you know, we, we just had a, we had a laugh watching this musical, but it is very interesting that when you like stop to think about it, these, this was a real person's life and a real person's like tragedy that happened to them. This is getting really dark right now, but it, <laughs> it, it's like the way we've commodified this like real person's experience for this, it, it, it's very, very interesting. That's the only word I can think of because it, like, obviously we enjoyed it. We had a fun time watching it and she was a public figure. So we've had so much media about her yeah. and about lots of, 
you know, we're watching The Crown. We watched, I don't know, weird Lifetime movies about Harry and Meghan where Princess Diana is represented by a lion. Like, we... The <laughs> Wait, way, what? Sorry, did you not watch that one? <laughs> sorry. Yes, um, obviously... This is, this, li- movie. is this, like, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Is she Aslan? Like, what? No, okay, so uh, this has been a while since I've seen it, but there's a Lifetime movie when <laughs> Harry and Meghan got married um, that was released... Um, I've where, seen the poster of that. But. Right, right, right. I got together with my friends and watched it, where Harry is like approached by a lion in the de- in Africa, which is a very <laughs> important location to his mother and to him and Megan. And the movie kind of like purports that this is Diana's spirit coming to him in the lion. Guys, watch it. <laughs> Guys, it's crazy. <laughs> Because it's crazy. It's so bad. It's so bad. It actually like, wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen, to be honest. It was like <laughs> pretty good. And then it was like really touching because you see the actors play them like in the limo. And then when the movie cuts them stepping out of the limo, it's like real footage of like Harry and Meghan. It was cool. Um, yeah. So again, there's so much media about her yeah. out there. And we've told her story in so many ways. There are books. and 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 so this musical is not really like adding anything that crazy to the huge catalog that there already is but but it, it, there is like a little like funny feeling about this person died 25 less like 24 years ago at this point like it is still so so recent um and to be making so much media telling this very very recent history is is wild to me I just wonder if that's like what we were saying earlier of like do they know the tone that they've put out there for the world they have to i i mean yeah like does the only thing like the only thing i can think of is like to take a more light approach to it because there are so many other approaches that are mm -hmm. quite serious like to compare obviously we have not seen it yet but spencer seems like a very serious take on diana's life for sure for sure so to Um, compare that yeah it's it's going to be completely different even to um like most people have seen The Crown at this point. Like, if you're looking for a kind of serious depiction, kind of, like, going into the mind of Diana and Charles and what they were thinking in this marriage, like, that's probably a better uh, yeah. venue for that. Yeah. Um, this is more fun camp. Which is why um, I think it goes back to what we said at the very beginning of this episode and what I've said a couple times now of, like, I don't think anyone was consulted on this because maybe Andrew Morton, because, you know, Andrew like, Morton was consulted. star of this musical. He's like, I will help you, but only if I am a character in yeah. your musical. And there's I an wonder, entire song. And you use my actual book as props. The way that we both, like, cried laughing when he showed up on that screen so it funny. was it was the way so he was exciting. like typing and like bopping his shoulders to the so song good. so funny so yeah, funny it was great um i i feel like that's all i have to say on this musical that is all i thoughts? have i i really don't my last thought is this was fun you know yeah. like just give it a chance it's <laughs> again it's not it's not good no but, it's, but it is great you yes know? i would say go in with low expectations and enjoy the ride is really what it is yeah Yeah. um i think should we rate this i think we should oh yes of course of course okay Okay. um wow there are multiple ratings here i could give it there's a (laughs) quality rating and there's an enjoyment rating i agree i think both let's give both let's let's give both okay so for my quality rating i'm gonna give it two out of five sapphire engagement rings oh love that for my enjoyment rating i'm gonna give it Six out of five puppy sleeves. Love that. Okay. Um, I'm going to choose the same metric because I think it's important. And I'm going okay. with the saddle because the saddle was really the star of this musical for James <laughs> Hewitt. My overall, what, what, what did you say was the first one? So Content? I said my quality rating quality. and my enjoyment okay. rating. My quality rating, I agree, is a two saddles out of five. My enjoyment rating is, I will not go as high as a six, but I will give it a five out of five. I would recommend this to everybody and if anyone is listening and is like wants to come with us when it comes on a tour and like sit in the audience and dance along like be there we will be there i am like so excited for the day that diana comes to toronto so that we can party in the audience to the main event i i cannot wait i hope it plays the princess of wales Yes. We have a theater in Toronto named the Princess of Wales after Princess Diana. She did not attend the naming, um, but it is named Imagine. after her. 
I like I swear she was invited. Um uh but yeah, so we do have that theater and if it doesn't play there, that's a complete missed opportunity. Hundred percent. Um so yeah, that's our thoughts and feelings on Diana the musical. Honestly, great time. Um Highly recommend. Go watch it on Netflix. And again, if you, like, listen to this episode and have not seen it, sorry for all the spoilers, but, like, go watch it. It's out there. Yeah. Um, and with that being said, it is now time for our Obsession of the Week. So my obsession this week is, some of you may know, I've talked about it on the podcast before, that I, when I'm studying, I like to watch concert videos or concert movies um, to just kind of, like, help me focus, get me in the zone. And something that I have watched recently is a playlist on YouTube of NPR Music's Tiny Desk Concerts. Now, I, in general, absolutely love Tiny Desk Concerts. Um, the Harry Styles I, one. The Harry Styles one's great. There's um, one that I really love is Imogen Heap. She brings her, like, contraption and, like, sh- explains how to use it to make... And then she sings Hide and Seek for everyone. It's fantastic. Um, the Taylor Swift one where she just, like, sings acoustic by herself. Billy um, and Phineas. Billie, I was going to say Billy Eilish and Phineas. Exactly. Um, the random one, because they did them at home. The recent Dua Lipa one, love. Um, it's not even... They didn't even do it in the Tiny Desk, but it's called the Tiny Desk Concert, and I think it's great. <laughs> um, but there are some musicals that have gone and done the Tiny Desk Concert. And um, we could talk about Be More Chill. We could talk about Hades Town. But the one we're going to talk about here is the Come From Away Tiny Desk Concert. Yes, concert. I think it's a musical that really suits that venue mm-hmm. because it does feel kind of acoustic, homegrown, um, simple, like music. And the song that I want to highlight is uh, Me in the Sky. Always just a fantastic emotional song in all um, in all venues. But when it's just kind of stripped down in this moment and you're just in an office um, watching this woman sing... It's not Jen Kalola, I believe it's an understudy, um, but singing Me in the Sky, being backed up by the rest of the female ensemble, it's just a truly, truly magical moment. Um, so I would recommend checking out all the Tiny Desk concerts because you kind of get to hear different versions of songs because they are limited to what they can bring into that Tiny Desk, but particularly the ones with musicals because you get to just see the raw talent um, from the cast there and the Come From Away one is truly fantastic. I don't think I've seen this one. It's very good. I've yeah, I mean, they're all seen, good. I've seen the Be More Chill one for sure because I remember, like, Joe Iconis rocking the piano during the Be More mm. Chill one. He's just, like, having a great time. And they had so many of the cast members in the Be More Chill yeah. one. Yeah. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, even the writers of Come From Away are there. Oh, fun. So, you know, they it was exciting for them to get to go. Um I'm not sure. I can't confirm or deny, but I believe they were there. Um, and I think that's like a super fun, like, uh, venue to get to show the music off. And it's very prestigious. You know, you're at NPR. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's New York, right? NPR? I think it's Washington. Oh. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wow. absolutely wrong. Maybe there's like a Tiny Desk, like, tour. I want to take it if there is one. Imagine. There's definitely not, but I would love to go. <laughs> I, I recently Googled um, whose desk it was. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know them because I do listen to sometimes the um, the podcast podcast. Um, mm-hmm. So I was like, do I know this person? Um, but it's I don't. Mm-hmm. OK, my obsession this week, you know, most of the time our obsessions are things that we love. This falls under the category, much like Diana, of this is so bad that it's good. I watched. This is very topical. The wow. Riverdale Next to Normal no. episode. No, you did not. No, you didn't. That's so embarrassing. I'm so okay. embarrassed. I feel like I might be the only person that is still watching Riverdale. I could not tell you what season we are on. I could not tell you what episode we are on. I could not tell you what the plot of the show is. But I can tell you that they just released a Next to Normal episode. Now, unlike the other Riverdale music musical episodes, we have talked about on this podcast, Heathers. And yeah. what was the first one that they did? Carrie, they did Carrie, Carrie. I and then they did Hedwig last season, which right. I watched. It was like whatever. This Fine. is the first time that they did not actually put on the musical next to normal. It was just a part of the storyline. Spoilers for anyone that's keeping Crazy. up on Riverdale. Polly, Betty's sister, is dead, and oh, Charles. Marky. She's on a, a Canadian show called Nurses. Yes, I feel like that's why she's dead. <laughs> um, and Charles, who's Betty's brother, 
also dead. So they find out in the season, or sorry, not the season finale, in the finale of the previous episode, before the next normal episode, that Polly has died. And they all, like, meet at the, whatever the pops underground that Veronica owns, whatever. Um, And they discuss, like, how Alice, Betty's mom, is doing, and she tells them that the only thing that's getting her through is listening to the cast recording of Next to Normal. And here we go, an entire episode. It gets me through. It gets me through. Right? So Polly and Charles are basically Gabe. Betty is... Her name's Natalie, right? I'm like blanking. Yeah. yeah yes. Natalie. But then also not because Jughead is Henry. And then his like new girlfriend, Tabitha, I think is her name, is also Natalie. So they kind of like sure. all switch off and sing the songs. Anyway, the reason that I am choosing to talk about this this week for my obsession, Lily Reinhardt is like kind of a good singer. And I was shocked in this episode specifically because she is singing like most of the songs from Next to Normal. And I feel like we have said this, we definitely said this in our Halloween episode. Some of these songs, like even in terrible Riverdale format, are still good and still yeah. hit. So the song that I am choosing today for my obsession of the week is She's Not Here. Um, Lily Reinhardt sings this and she sounds so good. And obviously Alice is playing what's Diana is uh Alice like Betty's mom is playing Diana and um it's just like an interesting take on an episode I also have to say and I've told you stuff because obviously again as I said only person that's keeping up with Riverdale Riverdale has like kind of turned into a musical in season five like every single episode they sing for literally no reason so I think they wanted to do another like keeping the theme of a musical episode but I actually think that having next to normal as the chosen cast recording and not doing the play was the correct choice so fascinating fascinating also Casey Cott plays the doctor and like we know his voice and yeah, yeah, his yeah. catch me I'm falling is really good so I feel like Casey Cott should play the doctor some at some point I mean, maybe. He's a bit young, I feel. Sure. But yeah, She's Not Here, really good. I was, like, shocked at this episode. I literally watched it yesterday morning and was like, wow, topical. And yeah, so bad that I liked it. So full circle moment here. Here we are um, with this. So yeah, that is our episode on Diana. That is also our conclusion, sadly, of the like movie musical month three weeks in a row i know i can't believe episode it after episode after episode um so if there are any other movie musicals out there that you would like us to talk about please let us know and you can do that by following us on instagram and twitter at off to be way podcast that's with the number two and you can listen to all these episodes anywhere podcasts are found um including apple podcasts and on youtube where you can subscribe to us and leave us a comment And as I said at the beginning of this episode, we will not be back next week, but we are back on our regular bi-weekly schedule. So we will see you next time. Bye.